One night, an uncle of mine was walking home. The sun was just starting to set, and in Lagos at the time, there weren't many streetlights. So when it got dark out, it got dark out. My uncle had been told by Abwe, dad's mom, many times, not to stay out too late and be home before the sun goes down. My uncle was a very stubborn person when he was younger, according to my dad, and always blew off everything my Abwe would say. On this night, he definitely should have listened to her. And if I'm not mistaken, he did after the events I'm about to retell. As he walked, he saw a man standing on a street corner. The man looked at my uncle and said, you should get home, kid. It's getting late. My uncle, being the jackass that he was, said, screw you, old man. Don't tell me what to do. And went about his leisurely walk home. After a couple of blocks, my uncle saw the same man standing on a different street corner. The man said the same thing he said before. My uncle didn't think much of it, told him to go fuck himself and continued walking. After a few blocks, my uncle saw the same man, but this time he had a big snarling dog with him. The old man said the same thing, this man with the dog growling and baring its teeth. My uncle was a little more bothered this time, understandably so, but still told the old man to shove it and kept walking. He was nearly home at this point, the sun was gone, the moon brightened the sky, and then he saw him again. This time he's just laughing maniacally. Not only is he laughing, but he has two dogs now. According to my dad, my uncle said the dogs and man's eyes were red. And as soon as my uncle walked past them, he heard the man let the dogs go. He took off running as fast as he possibly could. The dogs barking, snarling and giving chase. As soon as my uncle reached my Abwe's house, he started pounding on the door, furiously begging her to open up. Once the door was opened, he flew inside and told her to shut it fast. My Abwe was trying to figure out what was happening, and my uncle told her about the man and the dogs. My Abwe said he was being ridiculous and said there's nothing out there. She opened the door and saw nothing, but my uncle swore that he could see the dogs pacing outside back and forth. Teeth sharp, eyes red, fur black, and waiting for him. When I was in high school, my senior year, I was helping out with the school play. A girl I liked was in the play and asked if I could help, so of course I said yes. Well, 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 well. One night after rehearsals had concluded, I stayed back in order to organize the prop room. I had major OCD back then. A few minutes go by and I hear the door to the stage slam shut. Something to note about this door is that if you closed it without propping it open, you'd surely lock yourself in and be screwed. So being the nice guy that I was back then, I walk over, prop the door open and step inside. I can already hear my Mexican ancestors calling me a pendejo for going towards the noise. Anywho, I walk onto the stage and start calling out asking, Hey, anyone there? Everyone already left, so time to go. You know, you nearly locked yourself in here, right? It was silent, except for the boom, boom, boom steps I was hearing on the stage. I didn't only hear them, but I felt them through my shoes and it shook me. I thought nothing of it and kept asking who was around. Still no responses. And then I started hearing what sounded like someone running up and down the aisles. After a while, the spotlight started making noise as though someone was playing with them. At that point, I figured my friend Amy was messing with me. So I texted her and asked if she was fucking with me. She said no. I said bullshit and she FaceTimed me. She showed me she was in her room and said, yep, I left my comfy bed and comfy pajamas to mess with you. I apologized said we'd talk the next day, and hung up. After what felt like an eternity, the spotlight stopped. The running in the aisle stopped, but the stomping on the stage didn't. They felt closer, and closer, and closer, until it felt like they stopped right behind me. I felt a breeze on my neck, and thought, okay, has to be wind. Then, I felt three sharp nails land on my shoulder, one at a time. That was the last straw. 
I bolted out of there faster than I ran any three mile run I ran in the military afterwards. Grabbed my backpack and ran as fast as I could out of the theatre building. I live in historic district Savannah. And for anyone who doesn't know, Savannah is very haunted, especially the section I live in. My apartment is from the mid 1800s. My boyfriend lived in the studio apartments in our building and then a one bedroom apartment was available on the lowest level, so we took it. I expected some weird noises and minor stuff. As my boyfriend said, he's experienced it the year before I moved in, but nothing crazy but some weird ass stuff just suddenly happened. Besides recently feeling the phenomenon in our place, the activity seems to be happening in the bathroom. My boyfriend has been hearing noises constantly late at night while I'm sleeping. And funny enough, I told him how the bathroom has freaked me out for no reason. Well, just today, the weirdest thing happened. Our new and unused white soap dish that sits on a platform up high above everything with other teeth cleaning stuff, my contact fluid, etc. Randomly was filled with what looked like pee. Musty and had that pee smell. To the top with zero spills anywhere and our new toothpaste was floating in it. I mean pee colour. I brushed my teeth at noon Sunday. My boyfriend brushed them before me. And I put the toothpaste next to the mouth rinse, not in the soap dish. Then this morning, my boyfriend goes... Why is the toothpaste floating in our soap dish? It's a big deep one, by the way, with yellow liquid. We watched it go down the drain and it was pure pee, smell or not. You could tell. We created it by filling the white soap dish again, clear and white. We hadn't even used the bathroom all Sunday because we didn't come home until like 8 p.m., went out again and came home at 11 p.m., went to bed. Neither of us brushed our teeth last night because we both passed out. I used the toilet but didn't touch the shelf. He didn't either. We have no friends here and our windows have bars and don't even open. An issue our landlord has been addressed about. We also have security cameras and three locks. There was pee in the soap dish, filled to the top, on a shelf with the toothpaste floating in it. There was no other substance or anything anywhere else. Nothing was wet, just in that soap dish. I refused to smell it, but my boyfriend did and said it was musty, like pee. And if someone were to prank us by putting pee or even water in that dish, it would have fallen everywhere because it's high up and was filled to the brim. Like there's no way a person could pee in a soap dish and then raise it above perfectly laying it on a shelf and then add toothpaste in it. It sounds nuts and silly to care about, but something like this is strange. Who even heard of such a thing? Can a ghost even pee? I'm 29 weeks pregnant and I wake up consistently throughout the night due to having to pee a lot. I always feel like someone is watching me from the kitchen, which can be seen from down the hall when you go to the bathroom. A little backstory. My husband and I live with my father-in-law. His mother passed away in October and we were very close. Then in my son's two toy room and father-in-law room, which is right next to our bedroom, I always feel eyes on me when I walk by, no matter if I'm home alone or if anyone is there. I always feel like somebody's watching me. The other day I was in the bath watching YouTube, home alone. I hear someone walking in the house and hear the fridge door open then shut. My father-in-law was hunting, husband at work, son at his mother's house, and my dog's paws were visible under the door because she has separation issues, especially with me pregnant. My husband doesn't feel it, but my father-in-law said he never feels alone either. My son, three, stays as a ghost in the kitchen and in the walls. I don't know if I'm more sensitive because of being pregnant, but I've always felt like I'm never truly alone, no matter where I am. My husband is a pest control technician 
and he normally has to drive pretty far out in the woods to do his job. One day, his GPS took him to an old abandoned Freemasons building, which the GPS said was the firehouse he was supposed to be servicing. While he was slightly confused, he figured it was the right address and started spraying for bugs. When he gets to the back of the building, he sees a basement door open, like one of those doors that are technically in the ground, but lead to a basement under the house. He told me he could hear what sounded like someone walking, but he just hollered down into the basement that he was just a pest technician doing a job. He then hears what he explained to me as a monotone voice say, Hey, I need some help. He said it didn't sound like the voice was struggling or anything. He just replied saying, Everything okay? Are you hurt? The voice just repeated, I need help. He couldn't see down in the basement and there weren't any apparent light to see anyone either. My husband is a 6'2", 250 pound man. Not many people don't mess with him or would even try to talk to him. And people don't scare him easily. But he noped the hell out of there. He said the entire time he walked back to his truck around the front of the building, it felt like something was right behind him, watching him leave. He was confused as to why the GPS brought him there, but he eventually found the right place that he was supposed to be at. He called me after he had service to tell me all this. So, M was in our own home, and in his dream, he was getting ready for bed. It was already dark and the moon was illuminating into the house, leaving dark spots. When M entered the bedroom, he found an old man sitting on a bunk bed, rather than the king-side bed we usually have, and no old man. The old man was fragile and shaking. He needed help getting into bed. M helped the old man into the bottom bunk then proceeded to hop into the top bunk for a good night's rest. When he soon realised, wait, who is this old man and why am I in bunk bed? Once this realisation hit, he hopped out of bed to question why this old man was in his house. Except when M looked down, he was standing on batteries. There were dead batteries all over the room and an old man sitting up in the bed. M asked the old man, what's with all the batteries? rather than why he's in the house. The old man started shaking again. He was fidgeting with a flashlight and some batteries. He looked at M with empty and frightened eyes before saying, we need the light. M started to feel a demonic presence surrounding him. He could feel it getting closer with every breath. The flashlight went out, causing M to wake up to a heavy breath in his ear. He shot up in his own bed and his heart pounding and trying to catch his breath. M came downstairs to find me, as I work night shift and tend to stay up late. By this time, I had the Ouija board put away and was relaxing in front of the TV. He looked pale and ready to cry. I feel horrible, and strange things started to happen on a regular basis now. I was working the night shift currently as a nurse for about four months at this point. So I was up until 5 a.m. even on my days off. Anyways, I needed a new place to rent and I was not about to move in with my current boyfriend as he lived with four dudes in a house with only one bathroom. My friend suggested I rent out a room from her neighbor who is about 86 years old at the time and not doing so well health-wise. He said he'd give me cheap rent knowing a nurse was living in the house. I thought, Saving money would be awesome. Eddie was super friendly and very sweet. So I agreed to move in and decided to set up my room in the basement so it was darker and easier to sleep during the day. I cleaned it up and liked the fact that it was more private. I didn't have a whole lot of time to settle in due to my work, but on my first night off, I was reminded why people don't like basements. It was rolling around to about 2 a.m. I was up watching a movie or something of the sort debating if I should walk over to the 7-Eleven to buy some greasy goodness for dinner. When I started to hear someone walking down the stairs, quickly. The lights were off and the switch was over by the stairs, so I used the flashlight on my phone to see, thinking that Eddie really shouldn't be running down the stairs like that, but maybe he needs me. 
So I started to call out his name. Eddie, are you okay? As I walk over to the light switch, at first I don't even see him. Then wait, I can hear footsteps walking away from me. I can see someone, something walking the opposite direction from where I was standing. I called out for Eddie once more with a little more shakiness in my voice because the dark figure I was looking at was no 86 year old man. It was tall and big, over six feet. It looked right at me. It had these reflective yellow eyes that shined from my phone flashlight. I just stood there as it started to, I don't know the manifest. I snapped out of this trance-like state when it hissed or something at me. I jumped and turned on the light switch so fast and it was gone. I grabbed my purse and jacket and took that walk over to 7-Eleven and did not come back until the sun came out. I was so scared. That morning I moved my things to the upstairs room thinking that would help. I wish it was a bad dream, but I know what I heard and saw. I thought being out of the basement would help, but it didn't. Eddie's health started to decline a couple of weeks after this incident and he needed to stay in the hospital for a little while. So I was in the house completely alone. His daughter from out of town came by to pick up some clothes and I thought she would stay at the house while she was in town. But she refused and said she would rather pay for a hotel. That freaked me out even more, but I wasn't about to let that experience ruin a great place to live. So my boyfriend at the time always offered for me to stay with him. We'd been together for over a year, so it wasn't a bad idea. But he rented out the other rooms in his house to four other guys, and it only had one bathroom. So even though this house gave me the creeps, I really didn't want to live in the man cave. Anywho, Eddie was in the hospital, so I was in the house alone for a while. I was still on the night shift and preferred not to stay in the house alone at night. It was my night off once again, and I was in the house alone, reading in my bed and feeling pretty tired from working seven shifts straight. 4am was rolling around and I kept hearing something, like walking or someone dragging their feet. I started to think about the last time I had heard this, and my heart started racing. I remember I was even shaking at the thought. I thought staying in one of the rooms upstairs would make a difference, but it didn't help that I was in the house completely alone. I checked out the window that looked onto the street. It was faintly lit up from the street lights. It was empty. No one I could see walking around at 4 a.m. But I could still hear someone dragging their feet around the house. I was trying to reason myself with this was just an old house. Old houses creaking. Curiosity took the best of me. And I was tired of feeling afraid in my own room. Lifting off the covers of my blanket, I stood up and took a deep breath in. I opened the door to my little room and took a step out, rather than turning on the lights I used the flashlight on my phone to check the house. Okay, the main floor was all clear, and I concluded it was all in my head. That is, until it started again, but heavier and in the basement. Just like the last time, it sounds like someone is walking down the steps. I listened intensely as the walking turned into running. I was just standing in the living room waiting for something to appear at the top of the steps. Slowly, I grabbed my coat and purse off the couch and inched my way to the front door. I was crying, thinking the worst. Did someone break in? No, it was that thing again. And I could see its large yellow eyes staring back from the basement stairs. It was growling deep demonic. I couldn't breathe or move. I was trying to debunk it. It was just the lighting. It continued with that low guttural growling and I finally took a breath out. I unlocked the door and ran out of the house. Another trip to the 7-Eleven down the street then sitting outside until the sun came out. I couldn't spend another night in the house so I packed my belongings and moved into the man cave with my boyfriend. I enjoyed living in a full house and just learned how to live with the smell. Eddie's daughter was very understanding when I explained that I couldn't live there anymore and said she's going to set up her father in a home anyways. 
This story is completely true and by far one of the worst encounters as an adult. I am and always have been sensitive to the paranormal. I lose sleep. It's located in a small town in Ontario and was one of the first apartment buildings to be built in the community. East of a pool, a playground in the back, and over the years, multiple fires and lots of renovations. It's a seven floor building holding around 150 apartments. So we lived in this building because it was owned by a family member, making our rent cheap. All the family members lived in the building and have stories of their own. By the time we moved in, the pool was shut down and the playground was rusted and sat untouched in the isolated back area. We moved into the two bedroom apartment on the fourth floor. I was around 11 years of age and my sister was 13. We will call her Tio. My mother and stepfather will call M and D. My parents loved the fact it was cheap and a lot of our family members had already lived in the building. There was also walking distance to our school. My parents worked full-time jobs and had a decent social life. Feeling safe in the apartments and having a lot of family members around, they felt it was safe for me and my sister to be left alone overnight and even a weekend every once in a while. Because of this, I tend to stay up very late reading and other things preteens do when they're left alone. Late one night, my sister was in our room sleeping while I was reading in the living room. I kept hearing whispering. I just thought it was my sister on the phone or something. I remember trying to listen in on who she was talking to or where it was coming from before realizing it was a man's whisper. Okay, it's an apartment, so it might just be from the floor below or above us. I was about to blow it off before it started to get louder and sounded like it was coming from my parents' room. I quietly put my book down and poked my head around the corner to look down the dark hallway leading to my parents' closed door. They're gone for the weekend and it keeps getting louder. The voice is saying, get out, get out, get out, over and over again. Taking a deep breath in, I stood up and decided to investigate. I walked down the hall and leaned my ear onto the door on my right, leading to my room and where my sister was currently snoring. I continued walking down the hall and held my hand over the handle of my parents' bedroom door. Like out of a horror movie, it got really quiet and I thought I could hear something moving around behind the door. I started to chicken out and just stood in the dark hallway. My hand was still over the doorknob. A large bang on the door sent me falling back and landing on my butt. It really hurt the tailbone because I was super skinny and didn't have anything to ease the fall. I frantically stood up and ran into my room and into my bed, waking up my sister on the other side of the room. She turned on the lamp beside her bed and glared at me for waking her up. I just crawled under my covers and decided I needed to sleep. The next morning, I was still thinking about it. I thought it was a dream or I was just overtired from not getting enough sleep. But my tailbone hurts. This was the earliest memorable event I can remember from the apartment. The first sleepless night. The sleepless nights continued. We didn't live in the apartment for long before discovering it was a hot spot for haunting activities. But it didn't stop me from staying up late, reading almost every night. Close to 3 a.m. on a weeknight, I was in my bed reading once again another book. The Doom Brigade, as I remember being really into fantasy books at the time. I had a bookshelf above my bed for easy access, as I was indeed a bookworm. A 12-year-old girl with a little too much acne and a wild imagination. To this day, I stay up all night as I work the night shift. I can only sleep during the day now. Not just because of this story, but other events that would happen at night. Anyways, I put my favourite book away on the little shelf 
and rubbed my eyes from the irritation. I have a little bug flashlight that clips onto the bug. It makes everything in the background all splotches. So maybe that could explain things. I was looking around at the weird splotches and blinking my eyes to make them dance. That is, until I noticed my closet door across my room was slightly open and a dark spot around the handle. I always close the door and to this day always do and double check. I continued to watch it, debating whether to get up and close the door, but I didn't want to wake up my sister or get out the warm covers. I kept watching the open crack, watching it until it opened more. I really wanted it to be my imagination and the fact I was up all night once again, but I can hear the closet creaking open even wider. The figure emerged further out the closet as I kept watching it, wanting it to go away. I didn't take my eyes off it as it started to manifest into a cloaked figure. My 12 year old mind wanted it to go away, but it wasn't. It just continued to stand there looking back at me until it lunged at me, covering my small body in its cloak and what felt like hands wrapping around my neck. I screamed loud. It woke up my sister in the bed on the other side of my room and my mother in the other room. My heart was pounding so hard it hurt until the next day. When my mother came into the room, I was still screaming and had a pile of books covering me. She had her hands on my shoulders to try and get me to stop screaming. My family concluded it was because my bookshelf had fallen and covered me in books. Why I woke up screaming, but I know what I felt and saw. This was 15 years ago and I still remember it. Why can't I handle open closets to this day? The building had shopping carts in the lobby to bring large loads of whatever to different floors. It had an old elevator that will be in the next story. Anywho, I was around 12 years old and I remember being called down to the lobby by my mother to bring up a load of groceries she had ready to go in a shopping cart. I was to bring it up to our apartment on the fourth floor, unload the food, then bring the cart back down. Being a music lover and had just downloaded more songs to my unlimited playlist on the MP3 player, I was so thankful to have. I decided it would be a good time to listen to my new music, too loud for my ears. I put on some slippers and walked down the long hallway, leading to the elevators, down to the lobby and got the groceries sitting in the cart my mother had left, back up in the elevator and still had the music way too loud. I think it was simple plan. I started walking down the hall leading back to the apartment when suddenly I felt two hands grab my shoulders and shake me like someone was deliberately trying to scare or get my attention. I laughed thinking it was one of my cousins and whipped my head around to see nothing. No one was standing behind me. I took on my headphones and just stared blankly into an empty hallway. I almost ran back to the apartment still pushing the shopping cart. I unload all the groceries and soon hear my mom coming back to the apartment. She reminded me to take the cart back down, but I really didn't want to. This elevator was old and creaky, just like the building. I hated using it alone, but the stairs are even creepier and darker. In the basement of the apartment building were two snack machines and a drink machine, always full of my favorite treats. Nothing over two books back in the day. Okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat this and maybe it was me being paranoid, but I was around 15 and smoking some weed about an hour before the munchies kicked in. It would have been easier to eat some of the healthy snacks in the fridge, but I was baked and wanted chips and chocolate. It was around 11 p.m. on a Saturday night and I decided to dig into my little change cup for a few books and visit the machines of deliciousness. I walked down the long hallway and pressed the button for the elevator. I noticed right away it was louder than usual, but maybe it was just from smoking the devil's lettuce. When the doors opened, it seemed like the elevator was still moving and not yet ready for the doors to be opened. 
And I should have used my brain and just walked down the stairs. Or better yet, ate the healthy food back at home. But I wanted the goods. I walked into the elevator and pressed the button that leads to the basement. The doors closed and the elevator creaked as it started to move down. The lights even seemed dimmer than usual. That's when the whispering started, or what sounded like someone was standing in the elevator with me. Just as I looked around the elevator like I was going to find someone, it started to shake. The lights flickered and it shook so hard I had to grab the walls around me to keep my balance. I felt the elevator drop hard before coming to a slanted stop. You can guess I was crying by now and just wishing it was a bad trip, but it wasn't. And I'm now sitting in a broken elevator with the red emergency lights on. My heart was racing so fast I could hear it. I pressed the alert button a few times, between sobs mostly, and tried to listen if someone was around. I didn't know what else to do but sit down and wait for someone to notice, late on a Saturday night. Thankfully, someone did notice two women coming back from a bar or something. I heard them laughing and chatting as they pressed the button for the elevator. I called down right away and they responded. They told me not to worry and they're calling the super. It took another two hours before a fireman had to pry open the doors, leaving just enough space by the floor for me to slip out. For two hours, I had to sit in the dark elevator with nothing but my fear. Maybe the whispering was in my head, or sounds from the old building, but being stuck in a place like that was real. Thank you for listening. I hope you never get stuck in an elevator. It all started when I was five or six years old and had an imaginary friend called Bombo. He was a small Victorian boy who lived with his mother, who I said lived under the floorboards in the house that I grew up in. I used to talk and play with him all the time, teaching him about things like my Velcro shoes and some of the toys I had. It was no secret to my family who Bombo was and even what he looked like from how I had described him. One day, my sister, 14 years old at the time, went back upstairs to our shared room after a family day out and saw him, standing in the corner of the room, staring at her, exactly how I had described him, even down to the detail of the clothes. A few years passed, and I was now 10 or 11 years old. Our family had moved house a couple times, and now lived in a three-story house in a village, just out of my hometown. I always had a weird feeling about that house from the moment we moved in, but didn't think much of it over the excitement of having my own room on the top floor with a skylight. After a few months, things started to get strange, things disappearing, hearing footsteps on the middle floor landing at night, etc. These experiences progressively ended up getting stranger, with sounds like nails being dragged up the railings on the top floor, getting worse and worse, as well as some nights my little sister, three at the time, screaming, saying that there was a man growling at her in a room. Although my family put this down to an overactive imagination and didn't think anything else of it. It was quiet for a couple of months before everything came back again, but this time it was so much worse. This was the first time I saw it. One night, I was in my room, watching TV and getting things ready for school the next day. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw it a face peering in at me through my skylights. Its skin was dark red and its eyes were white with no pupils, only veins. Dark circles around its eyes leading to black cracks across its face. It was grinning at me. Even without pupils, I knew that it had its eyes locked on me. Needless to say, after a few seconds of initial shock, I ran downstairs to the rest of my family and refused to go back to my room. Shortly after this, my older sister, who had given birth recently and was living with us temporarily, had her own experience. As she was sleeping one night, she heard a knock on her door between 2 and 3 a.m. Thinking that I was the one knocking, she shouted, what? twice, with no response. The door flung open after a few seconds, with such a force that the dresser had dented the door from the impact. No one was there. 
Shortly afterwards, we moved again for personal reasons to the house that we now have been in for years. For years, there were no unusual experiences other than the occasional sound of footsteps, nothing that couldn't logically be explained. When I was 18, my sleep schedule was the same as any teenager, waking up around noon and going to bed around 3 or 4 a.m. This one night in particular, I was up doing the same as always, listening to music, watching films, etc. At midnight, I went downstairs to the kitchen as usual to get some snacks. On my way back out of the kitchen, I saw it again. Standing behind the front door, looking in through one of the glass panels, was that same face I saw all those years ago. Same red skin, same eyes, same dark circles and cracking features, staring right at me. This time, with one of its hands lent on the other glass panel, as it watched me. The only difference with it this time, it wasn't grinning. After standing there for what felt like an eternity, I ran as fast as I could up to my room and locked myself inside. I didn't sleep a wink that night. Some family friends who were regular churchgoers theorised after they had heard what I saw that this thing I had seen was Bombo, or what had taken the form as him in the first place. And when I had stopped giving him my attention and energy, he had then had to use another way getting my attention. But I don't know what to think for sure. All I know is that what I saw was the exact thing I saw as a child. And it came back. It's been four years since the last time I saw it. I hope I never see it again. When me and my ex fiance were together, we lived with her mother and grandmother. The grandmother had some health issues and needed to be monitored, but was able to take care of herself. The first strange event happened about a week or two prior from her grandmother's passing. We came home late one night from a party at her boss's house and the front door was locked. So we had to go to the back of the house. Both of us had to use the restroom and I told her to go in and being a guy, I stayed outside and did my business. Only one bathroom in the house. Now, they had a huge detached garage that was mostly empty and literally only had one bulb light in it. The door was always left open as the handle was broken. While I'm standing there, looking towards this garage doorway, lights up, with possibly the brightest light I've ever seen, but at the same time doesn't illuminate anything around me or the doorway. Immediately I pinched and ran inside out of pure fear. The second event came the night of passing. I was down in the basement playing Armour 2, as it was my day off and the basement had half windows pointing toward the driveway, which led to the garage. As I'm playing, I can hear her grandmother coming from the second floor to the first floor, which took my attention from the game and to the stairs. I notice out of the half windows, a bright light coming from the back of the house towards the garage, quickly across toward the front. And about two-ish minutes later, her grandmother collapsed in the living room where we attempted CPR for 30 minutes before the fire department took over. A few years ago, I went to Thailand with my girlfriend at the time. Well, it was more like a resort rather than a hotel. I won't mention the name of the resort, but each room was on a different level on the side of a mountain next to a beach. I won't mention it because I can't for the life of me remember what it's called either. Now, I swear this room that we stayed in was haunted. I've had previous experiences with the paranormal as a kid and throughout my teenage years, so I am a believer that there is some form of afterlife. When we first entered the room, it was bitterly cold. Yes, I know Thailand has a hot climate, so it could have been the aircon. But you can tell the difference between when an aircon has been on Hot air rises so you can still feel the humidity. But this room felt like it was below zero degrees Celsius. I put it off as the aircon, but thinking back on the experience, surely the aircon wasn't first class technology to produce such coolness. The next thing, I'm trying to sleep. I'm an insomniac, have been since I was six. And in my left ear, 
there was this very, very quiet electric guitar playing, like a death metal riff, over and over again. It wouldn't stop. The guitar riff kept playing until I eventually fell asleep. But me, being the metalhead that I am, it didn't bother me that much. And I put it off me listening to my music too loud, too long on the plane ride there. The guitar riff played in my ear every night I was at the hotel. Every night I stayed at the hotel, I dreamt of violence and gore, horrible things. I remember dreaming of murdering people in the worst way possible, way too gory to mention here. One night I fell asleep and I was having another horrid dream. And at the end of the dream, there was this white sheet that rose, typical ghost lookalike from old movies, where the ghost is under a white bed sheet. It looked like that. I'm a brave guy and I started challenging the ghost and I started fighting it with my bare hands. I remember I grabbed it by its throat and started choking it while yelling, I'm going to kill you, over and over. I think my sanity started dropping by like the third night staying at the hotel. Unbeknown to me, I was saying it in real life too. It woke my girlfriend up and she started fearing for her life, thinking I was going to kill her. She was saying to me, She eventually woke me up and she explained the dreams I was having and the experiences in the room. She told me she had no experience. That night after telling her the experiences, I woke up around 3.30am feeling extremely sick. I had to rush to the toilet and I vomited for about three hours. I told my girlfriend to take me to the hospital, but she told me to rest and see how I am in the morning. I woke up in the morning feeling like nothing had happened that night. Now, we moved to another hotel after a few days and everything stopped. No more death metal guitar, no more violent dreams, no more feeling sick. And the hotel was at room temperature. Could this be some sort of entity that lived in the hotel that was haunting or all pure coincidence? My boyfriend has trouble getting to sleep normally, and even when he does, he still wakes up during the night for whatever reasons, toilet, drink, etc. This night, he was sound asleep, as was I. He was laying on his stomach. He woke me up as he jolted up from his sleeping position and made this really loud gasp sound. I remember asking him if he was okay or what happened, something along those lines, but he had just laid back down and went back to sleep. Neither of us thought anything about it until a few weeks later at his work's Christmas party. He was talking to one of the ladies he worked with and somehow they started talking about ghosts and hauntings, which is weird because that's not something he's interested in. Anyway, she mentioned this man in a bowl hat that she has seen before, in a different house in a completely different state, and about having a fear of looking down a dark hallway for whatever reason. This is when he becomes interested because he remembers that night and tells us what had happened. So he was sound asleep, but he remembers something waking him up. When he opened his eyes, he saw a man sitting or leaning against his bedside table. It was a man in a bowl hat and a suit, just there looking at him, watching him sleep. That's when he jolted up and made that noise. He later told me it's not the first time he's seen him, but it's the first time that he had really taken notice or remembered about him. After him mentioning this, I start to recall little things that have happened. Like thinking I've seen someone in my peripheral vision, or thinking I've seen just the back of someone as they're walking behind a wall, etc. And then I remember how I also have a bit of a fear of looking down the hallway in our house at night, if the light isn't on. I haven't seen this guy as much, but I can feel some sort of presence. The other morning when I woke up alone in bed, my boyfriend was sleeping in another room because he couldn't get to sleep and didn't want to wake me. And I noticed that the bedroom door was pulled shut. Not completely shut, but just enough so it looked shut. My cat was on the bed so I knew to get up to open the door for her, to be able to get out. I slid over to the other side of the bed, sat up and rubbed my eyes. But when I opened them, the door was halfway open. No one had opened it because I hadn't moved. 
The cat was still on the bed and he was still asleep in the other room. Maybe my old mate decided to have a slumber party with me that night and made a quick exit. I don't know, but it just seems pretty strange. So a number of years ago, my ex-husband and I went and did the night tour of Port Arthur in Tasmania. Before we started the tour, we were told a few rules about it if you're chosen to be a lantern bearer. The two I remember is that, one, if you're at the front, make sure to knock before entering a room, and two, if you're at the back, close the door behind you, and if you feel a tap on your shoulder, don't turn around. Well, we were both selected, and he was up the front, and I was at the back. Partway through the tour, a couple offered to take my lantern, and I sheepishly went up the front to join my partner. The tour was really cool, and I kept taking random photos in corners of rooms, especially the morgue, but nothing other than what I wanted to think were orbs, were probably just water droplets on the camera lens. It had been raining. So when the tour ended and we were all in the front lobby area, the tour guide thanked us for joining and to check the back seat of the car, just in case a ghost was hitching a ride. No worries. We drove back to where we're staying and I was walking ahead of my ex as he was having a smoke and there's a half circle shaped roof patio thing above the door into the motel. While I was walking up to the door, I was also looking up at the roof and there was a black bust shape of a person, head and chest, leaning over the roof towards me. As I kept walking closer, it kept leaning further over like it was watching me. Anyway, I get to the door and I'm pointing up to the roof and telling him to look up because there's someone up there looking at me. He looks and of course there is no one up there. I'm getting a bit freaked out now because I have a super overactive imagination and this was peaking hard. Once inside and walking up the stairs, there were these porthole round windows leading all the way upstairs and I refused to look out. In our room, the curtains were open and I closed them straight away because I didn't want to look out. Surprisingly though, I slept really well. The next morning when we were leaving, I went outside and turned around to have a look at the roof where my friend was watching me the night before. There were tools and whatnot on the roof as there must have been renovations happening and there was a glass sliding door for access onto the roof. As this is the part that 100% convinces me that it was a ghost, the roof was made using corrugated metal roof sheeting, the kind that creaks and cracks and pops when any sort of weight is put on it. If a human person was on the roof, we would have heard them as clear as day. Plus, being nighttime, the sound would be 10 times as loud. I never had a great relationship with my youngest brother. He's two years younger than me. But one night we were sitting on the grass across the street from my mom's house. In front of us was the highway and nothing else. On this green area, in between the street and the highway, were some trees and some light poles, although half of them didn't work. I remember I was sitting there with my brother, having a nice conversation which wasn't that usual. And out of the blue, I felt that somebody was looking at me. So I turned to my right and there he was, in the darkness under a tree. I saw a man, he was wearing brown pants and a red shirt. There was something about the way he looked at us that terrified me. I told my brother, don't look, but there's a man under the tree and he's looking at us. He tried to act cool and in the most discreet way he could. He turned into that direction, but then he just stood looking that way. He got me nervous. Don't look, I said. No one's there. I thought maybe I mistook the tree for a man. So I looked with confidence and there he was, still looking at us. And by then, he noticed we were looking at him too. I didn't recognize him. It wasn't any of the neighbors. I told my brother that he was under, under the tree, wearing a red shirt, looking at us. By this time, my brother was starting to sound angry. He told me I was crazy. He didn't care anymore. He looked and pointed at the tree. 
no one's there. I couldn't keep my head up because every time I looked, the man was there. This is when things got interesting. My mum used to have this cat. She was the sweetest cat in the world. She was a lap cat, a people cat. She loved to being held and pet. She loved us. The cat came running out of the house. She stopped in the middle of the streets, looked at the direction where the man was standing and growled. Her fur got pointy and she looked ready to attack. She then ran back into the house. Stopped in the middle of the yard and did that aggressive thing again. My brother and I looked at each other, got up and ran inside the house too. To this day, if you ask my brother about that night, he'll say he didn't see no man, but he saw the cat. I was walking to my room from the bathroom. Basically, the layout of my house is that this hall comes from the living room and ends with my bathroom. But on the right of the bathroom, looking down the hall, you have my room and the left my sister's. Now, the switch to the bathroom light is near the door on the same side as my sister's room. And I have to turn the light off to go to bed. So I start walking out of my bathroom and turn to make sure I hit the right switch but my body is already halfway into the hallway. So for some reason, my mind tells me to look forward. So I turn my head and see a shadow like two inches from my stomach. So being sleep deprived, I just step back to not bump the shadow as it's moving. Bear in mind, it's about 5 a.m. and only me and my mom are home. My mom is asleep upstairs because again, it's 5 a.m. Now 5 a.m. me is stupid as hell. My mind doesn't even process what I'm looking at other than it looks like a down swing of a hand reaching out or a head turned so the eyes are parallel to the ground. I couldn't really tell you because fear was the only motion that set in but apparently not quick enough because I turned to look back at the light switch for half a second. But one of those two is correct. The first thing that processed in my mind was, wait, no one's up. And I went to look at what the heck is so close to me. Because whatever it was, I know was human. Looking. Because my mind went, there's a strange man right in front of you. So I try to focus on it. And all I'm greeted with is my sister. Who's not even home. Dark doorway. And I've decided I'm never leaving my room again. Ever. I can still hear stuff bumping around in my living room. But nobody is walking around. Like I know how that feels when the floorboards shift and how it sounds, even when someone's trying to sneak around, and I could just hear things moving like chairs being shifted and the gate at the bottom of the stairs latch being toyed with, and small scratches and coins rattling. Again, I have so many stories, but like we have to energy, cleanse our house at least two times a year, and I'm constantly cleansing my space because I have had problems in the past, almost like this, but not so close as to literally move out of the way thinking I was going to bump into someone. More like across the room having a staring contest with a shadow figure or being grabbed by the waist on a couch at my dad's. But like something about actually processing it as a person in front of me really is scaring me more than like any of the other things. It was 2001 and the whole sixth grade class, about 60 kids at my school, had a week camping field trip in some redwoods a couple hours from our school. It was supposed to be a celebration for finishing elementary school. Basically, it was a week of swimming, hiking, crafts and adventure. It was great fun. On one of the last nights we were there, the camp aides took us on a night hike into the forest. There were about five to 10 camp counselors and teachers with flashlights and the students got little glow sticks to hold. We first gathered in a large soccer field to get directions and organize our group. It was very dark and we could see all the stars in the sky. We were surrounded by thick, dark forest. As I marveled at the nature around me, I saw something white flitting about my peripheral vision. 
I turned to see a strange, rapidly shifting white entity. It seemed like it was glitching, the way it was sort of blinking in and out of existence. It was almost pitch black outside, yet the figure seemed to be internally lit with sparks of energy. Thinking it was my eyes adjusting to the dark, seeing floaters or ocular debris, I rubbed my eyes and blinked. I looked straight at it, expecting it to disappear, but it didn't. It actually seemed to become aware of me looking at it, as it moved back into the trees a little further when I continued to watch it move about. When I looked away, I could still see it in the corner of my eye and start to come closer. It emerged from the perimeter of the forest. At first, it looked like a humanoid diaphanous figure. Then it morphed into a wolf-like figure running on all fours quickly. There was a good distance between me and this spirit, but I still was scared and felt sick to my stomach. I thought I was going crazy or something was wrong with my eyes at the time. I didn't believe in ghosts and had only a couple spooky encounters, like cabinets shutting randomly. Up until then, I always felt there was a logical explanation to everything. Anyway, we finally began our hike. My best friend was right next to me, but I told her nothing of this creepy ass shifting transparent creature thing in the forest. The thought of her not being able to see it or thinking I was crazy was too much of a risk. To my relief, we turned away from the side of the forest where the thing was and started to enter the forest on the opposite side. The trail was very steep. We hiked in a long line with camp aids at the front, middle and back of our group. I was somewhere in the middle. After 15 minutes or so of hiking, I remember feeling a prickling sensation down my spine and my stomach churned. I glanced behind me and that's when I saw the forest thing at the very back of the line following us or me. Although there were still a lot of kids in line separating me and the ghost, it was much closer than before. When I'd seen it in the woods by the field, it now had a distinctly humanoid form. Although its edges seemed blurry and in still constant flux, it had no face and if I stared at it directly, it would fade somewhat but not disappear. And like before, when looking at it peripherally, it became much more solid in form. I was scared shitless, but still said nothing to anyone. I decided my eyes were still tricking me. Once we got to the top of our destination, it was time to turn around. I saw the figure still hanging around the end of the line. The front of the line doubled back and to my horror, I realized I would be forced to pass by the white figure. As soon as I got within 15 or 20 feet of the figure, it dissipated like steam or smoke right in front of me. I never saw it again. I didn't sleep that night in the open air cabin and was very relieved that we were going home the next day.